What is up everybody? Charlie with NHORC here. Today I'm coming at you with my first impressions and review of the Team Associated DR10M. So, this is my no prep drag car that um, I've just finished the build series on. May not all be live yet. Link in the corner if it is. Uh, so, I'm coming here after about a month of running this thing since I've done the build and uh, I want to give you my first impressions as a rookie uh, at drag racing. So I haven't done any events yet. I've just been trying to get this thing dialed in. And <clears throat> for reference, like I said, this is a DR10M. It's got a Tekken RX8 Gen 3 in it and a Phantom Icon uh, 3.5. So this thing is not your beginner's no prep drag RC car. Uh, and as a beginner, I can say this might not have been the best idea. <laughs> this thing is hard to get used to. I've always liked drag racing and uh, you know, I thought I'm only going to get one. I'll just get the nicest one, right? This is a Street Outlaw build. Uh, this isn't a stock build, right? There isn't a stock DR10M. So I was just like, I'll buy the one, I do my standard thing, I buy once, cry once, so I tend to spend a little more money uh, and get the thing I want, but holy crap, this thing is hard to learn how to control. So I'm up here at a new location, I think this is going to be my best bet. Uh, this is a development near me, there's no houses down there, it's a dead end, so I've got this nice brand new stretch of pavement here to, to get some runs on and i'm gonna put a few runs down and uh i'll come back and talk to you about it a little more once i get a few runs in but spoiler this thing is super hard to control if you're a beginner getting into no prep drag rc uh go ahead do yourself a favor buy a stock class so it's just, it's so much power to control, right? I've got an X-Max, I know how to control big power. This thing on 2S clears 60 miles an hour in two seconds. It's so hard to control as a beginner. So <clears throat> we're gonna get some dope footage. Uh, another thing I'd say as a beginner, buy more than one battery. I bought a single battery here and it's just a pain in the butt. I live on a dirt road, so I can't go test right in front of my house. So I got to drive here a few minutes down the road. Uh, having one battery is only good for like four or five real first hits that have the good power to them. And you can see the drop off real hard after three or four hits. Uh, so we're going to do a few runs and we'll come back and talk about it. All right, so I'm going to go over a few bits of the build here before I get to the running video. So to start off, I've got this Proline Supra 95 body here. I absolutely love this body. Done up with my livery. This is the fanciest livery I've ever done. This is all painted in. It's not a decal. Uh, really, really a fun time doing this. It came out super good. I was really worried that it wasn't going to come out as good as I was hoping. Same thing with this Toyota decal or logo in the back here. This is not a decal. This is painted in. Um, you know, I did that with a stencil and uh, a lot of freehanding it, <laughs> and I'm super happy with how it came out. I love the livery. I love the scale details I put into it. Right, I've got the scale turbos, scale intercooler on the front, little fake parachute on the back here. And I know you might maybe saying like, "Well, you're gonna rip those off when you crash." Very possibly. But I love the scale details way too much to not to not put them onto this build because it's such a nice a nice looking rig. Um, so under the hood, first off, we've got magnet mounts. Uh, <clears throat> as a beginner and as a scale guy, I wanted magnet mounts. Uh, I hate body posts. I hate body pins. I don't want to deal with them. Uh, so I went with uh, these are the uh, I believe they're the Yeah Racing. Yeah, uh, yeah, these are the Yeah Racing mounts. Um, they work well enough uh, when you crash, the body flies off, which I wanted to protect the body. Um, 
but uh, they could be better. They're not ideal, they're not made for this. Um, they've got little ridges so the body doesn't fly off while driving, which is good. As soon as you roll, it goes for a ride, uh, which is okay, because body posts are easy to replace and generally it just scrapes along the body posts. So, as far as the build is concerned, <clears throat> Right, obviously all the painting and everything is real nice. Got the Tekken RX-8 Gen 3 in there. Uh, we've got, what I'm using right now is an SMC 6500 150C uh, discharge rate battery. Um, this is a really cool little voltmeter, which might be a little hard to see in the direct sun, but it tells you the battery voltage live. This is uh, made up by a drift friend of mine, Dory Fudo. Uh, link to his uh, Instagram in the comments. That way you can pick one of these up if you want. They're like 20 bucks. Shows you the live reading of your battery so you can monitor it. Like that a lot. Eco Power, um, 110WP110S servo up front. Doesn't need to be super fancy. Uh, you know, it's just gonna keep the wheels straight. Uh, I've got a GNSS. Speed analyzer, which is Velcroed onto the front. I'll do a full review of that later. Um, <clears throat> I've got an additional little fan down in here to cool the motor. I started off without the fan, really needed it. This thing overheats in a hurry. Without the fan, it was like I could get three hits and I was starting to worry about it. Um, and then in the front, just got some basic Hoosiers. In the back, I'm running currently the Reaction Plus HPs from Proline. These are the super wide guys. They're like 20% wider. Uh, not quite broken in all the way yet. Still got a little bit of a mold line on them. And I've been using the uh, SXT Launch Prep Compound. Uh, so I put that on before I leave the house and then I kind of just run with it because I don't feel like waiting 20 minutes between hits right now. So. That's kind of where the build is at at the moment. Um, <clears throat> still, still definitely working on some tuning. I've got some kind of alarming uh, moisture on the front shock, so I might need to pull those open and check my shock oil levels. But uh, oh, and it's running a Futaba receiver to go with my trusty uh, T4 PM. So <clears throat> that's the build. Uh, gonna get some nice glamour shots, and then we're gonna launch this puppy a few times. So we're gonna power this guy up. Sorry, it's very hot out today. I can barely put my leg down without hurting myself. So power switch, 825. Yeah, doesn't look like I charged the battery quite enough. Fans all spin up. All right, we've got the car powered up here. That sign on the left, the gray one that's facing the left, is about 132 feet away. Pavement temps are 132 right now. Tires are sitting about 112. Let's warm them up. Tires at 140. It's pretty good. GNSS is running. Let's see how we do. Instant crash. That tracks. That tracks. Oh, God, it's so hard. Like I said in the beginning, it's so hard. I've got my controller turned down. I've got, you know, I haven't programmed the, the ESC yet. Everything looks okay, but it's so hard, so hard. All right, so shell seems totally fine, body seems fine, but this is what happens with these magnet mounts, see? The body rolls and it kicks them back. So usually just gotta kinda kick them back into place. It's not the most ideal, but it is what it is. I don't see any damage, everything seems fine. It was a pretty mild rollover, all things considered. Let's see if we can see what uh, what we did here for the short amount of time we did. Only got to 11 miles an hour before I crashed. Not ideal. I'm gonna set back up. All right, got everything set back up again. Tires have cooled back down. Keep the tires back up. All 
All right, that's pretty good. All right, let's try this again. Ooh. That was not good. I think my, yeah, my trim is pretty far off. That would certainly contribute to it. I'm gonna reset my trim real quick. All right, we've got the trim set back up. Good warm tires. Let's try this again. Oh my God, it's so hard. All right, no damage from that crash. Heating it back up. We'll get down to 8.2 volts here on the battery meter. See if we can get a straight one out of it. Okay, that was definitely the best one yet. Let's see how we did. 51 at 3.29. I had to let off of it a little bit there, but best one to date, well, best one today. My best is uh, about two point something at 60. All right, here we go, another hit. This time we're sitting at 7.98, so we're definitely not gonna be getting full power. All right, here we go. All right. That was much better. Granted, I couldn't really get into the throttle until, I don't know, 40 feet. See how we did. Oh, I didn't have it running. I'm so mad. All right, here we go. My old friend came back today. He's trying to carry me to my grave. The shallow earth is where my bones now lay. But the earth keeps sinking deeper, and I can't escape. Just finished my testing. I'm in the truck with the AC on. It is over 90 degrees here in New Hampshire on June 1st. Uh, brutally hot. Too hot for me already. <laughs> so, as you can see in the video, these outlaw cars are hard to control. Uh, you know, once the battery starts getting low, I feel like I can control it. <laughs> but at that point, I'm only making passes at 45, 50 miles an hour, three seconds. Um, I mean, I guess it's better than crashing the car, right? Obviously, uh, no major issues this time. I've had a couple of bigger rolls uh, elsewhere. None today. Nice to see, you know, just a couple skids off the road. Uh, this road's crowned a little bit more than I'd prefer, but this is still the best place I think I've found to do this. Um, it's amazing how much the crown of the road, right, because it slopes down away from the middle on each side for drainage. It's amazing how even if you're perfectly trimmed, it just drifts right off. These things do not hold center. Uh, even if you've got the perfect trim on them, they just go with the road because they're so finely tuned. Um, <clears throat> overall, first impressions of DR10M is it's a great car. It's probably not a great beginner car, at least if you set it up the way I did. <laughs> I think you can set it up to be in one of the lower classes, I'm not sure. Uh, if you are a beginner to RC drag racing, do yourself a favor. Even if you've got the money to buy once, cry once, maybe start with something like a Drag Slash or the uh, DR10M 
RTR, you know, one of those pre-made ones, uh, whatever the lossy one's called, I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, do yourself a favor and start there. <laughs> Learn the basics and work into it. Uh, it's definitely fun. I'm definitely gonna keep working at it. Um, I'm gonna keep crashing probably. I really need to find a nice smooth parking lot around here in the central New Hampshire area that uh, is nice and wide open, super new, nice and smooth, you know, no, none of those sealant filler cracks or anything like that. Uh, Cause that's what really rolled me. Uh, I hit one of those that bumped up, it caught, <laughs> flew. Didn't get it on film, of course. Like the one time I'm not filming, I usually throw my GoPro down. Today, obviously, I brought the Nikon out instead. Um, but uh, it, it's a super well built kit. You can, you know, I think you can probably be as fast as you want to be with it. Um, I mean, you might not win nationals. I know there's some really high end stuff you can get, but uh, you know, if you're into drag racing, go for it. If you're new to drag racing, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend you get yourself a drag slash and stick to the stock class for a while. <clears throat> All right, sorry about that. My camera's overheating. Like I said, it's like 90 degrees. Even in the air-conditioned truck, uh, I still really got the temperature up there on the camera. So, as I said, uh, super well-built kit. If you know what you're doing, I'm sure you'll have a great time. If you don't know what you're doing and you stick a 60 to 70 to 80 mile an hour 2S motor and ESC in it, you're gonna crash a lot like I am. <laughs> Which uh, can be a little nerve-wracking, you know? We spent all this time on the new kit. It's an expensive kit. Uh, nice body, you know, a lot of hours into that body. And to see it go flying off the road at 60 miles an hour is just absolutely gut-wrenching. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to keep at it. Um, probably not as many videos with the drag slash, you know, uh, I'm going to keep filming, keep putting content out on TikTok and Instagram. So if you want to see quick hits on that, by all means, make sure you follow those, uh, NHORC and NH operator, uh, on TikTok and Instagram. If you've enjoyed this content, please give me a subscribe. Please give me a like comment down below if you got questions or tips for me right how to not suck so bad um, you know I just if I could keep it straight on the <laughs> on the pavement I think I'd be doing pretty good so yeah uh, NHORC Charlie signing out see you next time everybody <laughs>